In spite of seeing so many natural and man-made calamities, we are now hurtling into one more man-made disaster. A disaster which may prove far more destructive than anything we have seen so far, simply because it will affect nearly every single person living on this planet. This new simmering disaster has the potential to stunt our growth, impair our immune system, and may even lead to severe damage to our brain, liver, kidneys, and other vital organs. It may increase incidence of life-threatening diseases like cancer and a number of other ailments that are unknown to us right now. Ironically, it's not a fictional plot of any horror film, but a fact that has been unfolding for nearly two decades now. Next on its target are the people of India and the food on their platter. As the traffic light turns red and vehicles on this busy Delhi road come to a screeching halt, it's time for eight-year-old Sunita to grab her income generation opportunity. Before the light turns green, Sunita demonstrates her gymnastic skills to eke out a living for herself. What is common between Sunita and nearly every single person on this planet is that we all feel hungry and we all have to eat to ensure our survival. But what will happen if the food that we eat becomes our worst enemy and instead of sustaining a survival, it starts killing and crippling us? Food can start killing people. Which food may kill me? Could be, yeah. If you eat the wrong sort of food, yeah. I don't think so. I don't know. How can it be possible? If it is not cooked properly. Why should food kill me? No, if it is cooked very well and uh, it's cooked by my mother. No, I didn't say that something's wrong with the food. Call me a fear monger if you like. But the threat to our lives with the food that we eat was never so real as it is now. A criminal conspiracy by multinational corporations in the garb of genetically modified food is all set to wreak havoc with the people's health in India. If we do not wake up in time, soon we will end up having poison in the food that we eat to ensure our survival. In a country that is a melting pot of cultures and religion, food is often seen as the greatest gift of God. But our staple food items like rice, pulses and vegetables that nature has given to us are being irreparably damaged as they're being laced with genes of other living organisms. Nature allows you to cross a wheat plant with a wheat plant. Nature allows you to cross a maize plant with a maize plant, tomato plant with a tomato plant, or a pig with a pig, horse with a horse, you know, like that. It doesn't allow interspecies crosses. What genetic engineering is doing is, you can actually cross, in, in that sense, you can actually cross or bring a character from, let's say, a pig into human beings, or from a human beings into one plant. And people should know that when you mix genes this way, then you are courting disaster, because if the disease comes with it, so why should you want to use it? The killing potential of GM food became known for the first time in 1989 when a dietary supplement, L-tryptophan, led to death of nearly 100 people in America. It caused sickness and disability in another 
10,000 people and even forced a US court to make its manufacturer Showa Denko of Japan to pay $2 billion as compensation to those affected by its consumption. Individuals started going to doctors with all sorts of very severe symptoms. They had incredible pain, greater pain than the doctors had ever seen in their entire careers. Hair was falling out, there was memory loss, there was muscle weakness, some people had their muscles tighten up and uncontrollably lock. The skin became leathery and painful. Hundreds, thousands of people in the United States had these symptoms, were taking out tryptophan, but were not diagnosed. The doctors and the patients did not know there was a deadly epidemic throughout the United States. Five to 10,000 people ultimately got this sickness. Some were permanently disabled, about 100 died. If you think the tragedy caused by L-tryptophan was an isolated case of a technology going wrong, you need to think again. Offsprings of rats fed with GM soy died within three weeks of a trial, while many others developed multiple health problems. In case of mice, there are ample evidence which show, including Monsanto's own studies, which show that genetically modified food can play up with their liver, can, can affect their kidneys, the size diminishes, can play up with their blood, can cause irritation, can cause all kinds of diseases. They're all on record. Now, if it, if it can have on mice, I see no reason why that thing will not transfer into human beings. Soy allergies skyrocketed in the UK soon after GM soy was introduced in the country. 12 cows died in Germany when fed with Bt corn in 2001. Inhaled Bt corn pollen triggered severe skin and respiratory infections and affected nearly every single person living in a village in Philippines in 2003. This is one of the most dangerous technologies ever introduced on Earth and it is being deployed in our food supply. It is madness. Until unless it is proved foolproof that it has no harm for the public, don't propagate it. Propagation of something of which you are not sure of, which would create enormous damage to the life on this planet, is not acceptable by any means. It is not science, it is terrorism. जिस तरह से आज हर घर में ब्लड प्रेशर शुगर आदि का पेशेंट है इन फ्यूचर जिस दिन ये जेनेटिक मॉडिफाइड फूड खाने लगेंगे देश के लोग शायद उस दिन हर घर में कैंसर का पेशेंट होगा ये देश के लिए बहुत खतरनाक होगा इन स्पाइट ऑफ सो मेनी रिपोर्टेड हार्मफुल इफेक्ट्स ऑफ जीएम फूड द फूड एंड ड्रग एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ अमेरिका एफडीए केप्ट ऑन इग्नोरिंग द फाइंडिंग्स एंड डिक्लेयर दीस फूड आइटम्स एज सेफ फॉर ह्यूमन कंजम्पशन वन जेंटलमैन इन अमेरिका took the US FDA to court. 44,000 pages which questioned the, 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 the harmful impacts or the, the relevance of GM food for human health uh, tumbled out of the cupboards there. And the US FDA uh, didn't have anything on to answer those things. In fact, the overwhelming consensus among the FDA's own scientists were that genetically engineered foods were unsafe and could lead to allergies, toxins, new diseases and nutritional problems. The person in charge of policy who overruled and ignored the scientists had been recruited to the FDA from Monsanto's law firm and later became Monsanto's vice president. It's a classic case of vested interests wreaking havoc on people's health because institutions that have been created to protect our health are actually hand in glove. The multinational companies who are promoting GM foods claim that after the green revolution, the gene revolution is the next big thing to solve global food problem. They say the application of genetic engineering increases the productivity through improved crop varieties, reduces input costs and lowers environmental hazard. They even claim that the food derived from GE crops is substantially equivalent to other conventional methods of food production. Given the evidence that we have today, these companies are telling an absolute lie for which there is no scientific evidence whatsoever. I'm not against genetic engineering per se. Genetic engineering can be applied to human gene therapy. It can be creating medicines in the laboratory under very carefully watched conditions. 
but we should not feed the products of an infant science to millions of people or release it into the environment where it can never be recalled. We don't understand the language of the DNA. Yes, I am for DNA research, genetic engineer in laboratories, in carefully controlled conditions, but not in my intestines, not in my environment. Driven by their sole aim of making profit and controlling the food production all over the world, the biotech giants like Monsanto, Syngenta, unleashed a wave of silent killers in the market. People began to report symptoms which were not known before. L-tryptophan was not the only case of allergic reaction to GM foods in the US. In 2001, the US Center for Disease Control and Prevention launched an investigation after consumers reported allergic reaction to a protein found in a bioengineered variety of corn called Starlink. I felt my chest getting tight and it was hard to breathe. I felt like I was going to die. I'm very concerned about this um, thing that's, you know, a few multinationals and a few greedy businessmen are doing I mean, they don't care for people, they don't care for the health of the nation or the world, just for a few bucks. European countries initially hailed the GM food as a new revolution to solve the food crisis in the world. But they became wary of their adverse effects on people's health with the rising incidence of prostate cancer and its link to a genetically modified substance called bovine growth hormone. There is something called a shock and awe. In, in Europe, what happened was they were faced first with mad cow disease and then they were faced with foot and mouth disease. Now, in both these diseases had inflicted a massive, massive destruction of the cattle and they had to burn cattle. Thousands and thousands of cattle were burnt alive. Now, in that particular situation, they, they have seen the horror of, of uh, you know, all these kinds of food and feeds. Now, they realize if it can happen to animals, it can happen to human beings also. The use of bovine growth hormone was banned, but people all over Europe became vociferous in their demand to put a ban on all kinds of GM food in their country. We demand more studies. That's why also we supported the demand for a moratorium that we need to, to know much more about this new technology. The opposition to GM food united the consumers, civil society groups and farmers like never before. I myself would never eat GM food because I do not know if it's safe or not. We don't have the relevant information, we don't have enough information about what is happening and so I would advise you not to eat it because we don't know if it's safe. In Switzerland, through a referendum, they even forced the government to put a five-year moratorium on production and entry of GM food in the country. Majority of consumers did not see any advantage, so they said, I don't want to take any risk. The same thing with the farmers. It was really their interest. They saw that they can sell better their products if they are without GM. At a time when countries across the world are shutting their doors on GM food, Dozens of crops and vegetables in India are undergoing various stages of trials simply because people in the country are largely ignorant about what GM foods are and what impact they will have on their health. It's genetically modified in the sense of... Mm, uh, what? I have not really ever tried anything. I don't even know whether it is good or bad. We don't have any other option than we got to use. It's, uh, it's very bad. Well, and we're well, still alive. We have some clues to make it more sweet. I really don't know exactly what, but there is something. Not, I don't know how. I will prefer organic food rather than uh, the genetic modified food. What food are you talking about? People don't know anything about GM foods at this stage. Uh, the government doesn't know anything about GM foods at this stage. Uh, corporations don't know much about GM foods at this point. Uh, we're, we're in a world where we're playing with a new technology which has massive implications for the environment, massive implications for food production, and massive implications for, for consumption. In the genetic engineering technology, we take genes from one species and put it into another species and make the genes work, that is, produce the product for which they code. 
Look at the way the genes are being now tinkering or the food is now being tinkered with. Gene from pigs are being taken to put into rice. The gene from fish to tomato, the gene for milk in human beings, human females has been now inserted into rice. And the scientists are trying to say this will take care of diarrhea in human beings. Now, all these permutation combinations have actually gone beyond the ethics that the society has been living in. And I think that is again going to create, whether it's a religious issue or whether it is going to be an ethical issue or a morality issue, that I think is also going to be infringed by genetically modified foods. Taking advantage of people's ignorance and a corrupt and incompetent regulatory mechanism in the country, biotech MNCs are getting firmly entrenched in India and conducting trials over a host of vegetables and food items which will soon find their ways on our platter. Today, 56 GM crops are at different stage of trials in India. And they include brinjal, okra, potato, cabbage, cauliflower, ginger, corn, tomato, mustard and rice that are integral part of our daily diet. Tomorrow you and I could be sitting down to a plate of bengan or bindi or a salad or tomatoes and you could not trust the food on your table to give you the nutrition that you've always expected of these vegetables. There could be something toxic in it. GM food is a big issue today in the whole world. They're not only GM food but overprocessed food, food that is not natural, not organic. The world is shifting towards organic food, natural food, unprocessed food. But here, nobody really cares about it as an issue. Even though BT cotton is the only genetically engineered crop approved for commercial cultivation in India, its disastrous consequences are there for everyone to see. Thousands of farmers who opted for BT cotton have committed suicide, while hundreds of others who used to work in BT cotton fields developed skin allergies which were not known before. India should form the organic way. They should not go to genetically modified food because we don't know yet that what are the benefits from there. But we have heard a lot about the harmful effect it can have on our health and uh, on our society. The toxins present in Bt cotton are so harmful that nearly 2,000 sheep and goats that went for grazing in Bt cotton fields in rural areas of Andhra Pradesh died in no time in the year 2006. It forced the state administration to put up warnings for people not to let their cattle graze where Bt crop was sown. The intestines of these uh, uh, animals which died after eating Bt cotton plants were shriveled uh, which means that the food that they ate was not digested and that could be because the, the, the microorganisms that digest the food like grass uh, which are present in the rumen of the scat of cattle, simply died on account of Bt toxin. If you think that the problem caused by Bt cotton will be confined to farmers and the animals only, you need to think again. Because the gene that is used in Bt cotton is the same which is now being used in Bt brinjal. Naturally, the people are outraged and they are out in the street to register their protest. <laughs> इस देश में नहीं घुसने देंगे। ये कार्रवाई हमारी उस लड़ाई की घोषणा है। ये जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड बीज का किसानों द्वारा विरोध किया जा रहा है। If we die tomorrow, if we get cancer, it's not just cancer that we'll get; we'll be passed on to our children. This is a question of our lives, and it's no joke. Bt brinjal could be a catastrophe. It's got an antibiotic resistant marker gene in there which could potentially create super diseases untreatable with antibiotics. It's got a BT gene in there which might turn our intestinal bacteria into living pesticide factories and BT has already shown to cause allergic reactions and toxic reactions. The tests that need to be done have just not been done on BT brinjal. There is a very strong critique of it from people outside the country whose credibility is not in doubt. And we ourselves have examined the data, the so-called safety data, and it's full of flaws. If you were to keep in, in, on, in a glass pane, a glass box, 
one Bt brinjal and you will put some insects into that. You will see, you know, in, in a day or two, all those insects dying. Imagine when you eat that Bt brinjal, what will happen to your body? जब पेस्टिसाइड छिड़कने पर ही इतना नुकसान करता था यदि उसको सीड के अंदर डाल दिया जाता है तो जैसे पौधा जहरीला हो जाता है उसको खाने से कीड़े मर जाते हैं उस जहरीले फलों को और सब्जियों को जब आदमी खाएगा तब आदमी स्वयं जहरीला हो जाएगा उसके एक एक जीन्स के अंदर डिसऑर्डर्स होने लगेंगे अनडिसिप्लिन वे में ब्रेक होने लगेंगे टूटने लगेंगे तो आदमी को कैंसर से लेकर के टीबी से लेकर के आंतों की लीवर की किडनी की और तमाम जो है ऑटोमेन डिसऑर्डर्स होने लगेंगे दिस कम्स फ्रॉम कैलिफोर्निया दिस इज फ्रॉम द यूएसए लीची फ्रॉम थाईलैंड The Indian government often claims that it has not allowed any GM food for human consumption in the country. But if reports about nearly 70% US food having GM contents are true and so many US food items are entering the country, how can we say with certainty that we are not already eating GM food? We have conclusively proved that we have already eating genetically modified food. These are Doritos corn chips which are being made by PepsiCo International and is being illegally imported and being sold in the markets of this country. In May 2008 when we tested these in the German labs we found out that these contain genetically modified corn varieties which have the potential to cause kidney and liver damages because of which most of the European countries have banned these GM corn varieties. What's most disturbing is the fact that even after 8 months Uh, after alerting the health ministry and the GEAC, no steps have been taken, and these Doritos corn chips are still being sold in the markets of this country. Doritos are not the only brand that contains genetically engineered ingredients in India. I'm at the Khan Market in Delhi. Let's take a look at other brands that contain genetically engineered ingredients. So this is from the United States. It contains ingredients that are from soy or corn. and therefore you can assume that unless it says organic it's genetically engineered canola is genetically engineered both in the united states and canada it's got corn syrup cotton seed oil soybean oil and also has corn starch all that's from genetically engineered foods it's actually not legal to be importing these products into india but there's no enforcement The Genetic Engineering Approval Committee (GEAC) since its inception never bothered to issue guidelines regarding the regulation of imports of GM food products and has proved toothless in preventing the GM contaminated food stuff flooding supermarkets across the country. Genetic Engineering Approval Committee is more or less a rubber stamp for the industry. That's the way it has behaved all over the years. Now interestingly, if we were to just make one clause introduce one clause that if something goes wrong with the genetically modified foods, the chairman of GEAC should be put behind bars. You will see everything will stop. While we are not in a position to say it with certainty if the food sold at US food chains in India is safe for consumption, but when we contacted them for the truth about their food, they refused to come in front of the camera. The biggest argument of the proponents of GM food is that it is being sold in the US for nearly two decades, and people there have been eating it and not dying from it. So why is there so much hue and cry in the other countries? It's a fascinating biotechnology argument to suggest that because the United States, is, the United States is using it and their consumers are using it, that it must be safe for the rest of the world. I mean, it took the United States about 500 years to realize that tobacco was dangerous. To suggest again that the United States is a country where we can we can trust their judgment to be a, a, a beacon or a guardian for the rest of us around the world is, is really a dangerous assumption. GM foods were introduced in 1996. Between 94 and 2001, there was a doubling of food-related illnesses. Five years after GM soy was introduced, peanut allergies doubled, which might be related to the introduction of GM soy. So no one can say that everyone in America is healthy, and no one can say that GMOs are not part of the problem. The average American, if you ask them, have you ever eaten a GM food in your life? 60% say no. 15% say I don't know. So three quarters of America do not realize that they eat GM ingredients in almost every meal.
as food crisis worsens, farmers push GMCs. Switzerland extends moratorium on GM crops till 2013. French Parliament rejects bill to allow GM crops. Italy, Greece, Austria, Poland ban GM crops. Western Australia extends moratorium on GM crops. Scientists warn against GM foods. Genetically engineered foods pose health risks for children. Prince Charles says GMO crop will be a disaster. India is not a guinea pig for P.T. Brindin. All the kinds of disasters that you talk about, rather from, from right from Hiroshima to Chernobyl to 9-11 to, to, to 26-11, whatever you call it, will pale in front of the disaster that is awaiting us in case of food. There's only one definite outcome of genetic engineering of food. The end of choice. The question is, as a consumer, what should you do? First of all is educate people about the harmful effects of genetically modified food. Second uh, is gather momentum for this uh, movement and educate also the bureaucrats. Expose all those people who are trying to make money out of uh, producing poison in the name of food. Third is uh, Satyagraha. What we should do is, and what the, the, uh, the public should ask for, the consumer should ask for, is a moratorium on release of any GM crop, sale of any GM seed for a period of five to seven years during which an appropriate risk assessment system should be set up. It is now your time to stand up and be counted. Let me tell you, if you as a consumer stand up and exercise your voice that this is not the kind of food that you want, I can tell you all these companies will go away. Log tantra mein sabse badi taakat jana shakti hoti hai. To ek virat jana shakti ke madhyam se pure desh mein hum iska purjor virodh karenge. Kyunki ek saath marne se behatar hai ki ek saath wo andolan karne ke liye khade ho. Aur iske liye hum sabse pehle honge jo iske liye andolan karne ke liye khade honge. Aur desh ke karolu log humare saath khade honge, hum isko nahi aane denge. As dusk falls and traffic starts thinning on the road, it's time for Sunita to go home and look forward to a well-deserved meal with her family. She may be unmindful about the safety of the food that she and her family eat, but how can we, the educated lot, leave the safety of something as vital as food to be decided by those whose sole aim is to earn profit? We have to ensure that our bodies are not enslaved by these corrupt, and criminal multinationals and we will have to force our government to put a complete ban on the production and distribution of GM food in India till its safety is not assured through extensive and impartial trials. After all, what is at stake here is our own health and our very survival.